everybody. So uh, today we talk, we, we, we try to talk a little bit of uh, Kubernetes security or container security in general. And I don't like to deep dive into all of the technical details. I would like to more focus on, or let's say on the fun part, uh, if security can, goes wrong. And uh, by the way, I'm from a Silicon Valley startup, New Vector. We are based in San Jose. But I'm living here in Germany, so I had only three hours uh, drive to, to Berlin. Uh, and I would like to showcase what, what uh, uh, goes wrong at that uh, Kubernetes hack at Tesla last year. And by the way, that was not deep technical. And uh, maybe first a question, how, how long do you, do you work with, with Kubernetes? More than a year? More than two years? Now switch back three years? <laughs> and now I have to say, uh, who is working with containers more than three years? Four? Um, great. OK, so. But uh, security for Kubernetes was, is, is getting more and more popular. Uh, I think the first mention I heard at KubeCon in, in May in Copenhagen, they focused all about hey, we would like to mention or work more on, on security things. Um, but why do we do it? So one, one just, you, I, I, I think you will already know that. We try to move everything to microservices uh, from, from our old style monolith. And uh, the next thing what comes, uh, we lose a lot of visibility what's going on inside of, the cl uh, of our cluster. Or do you know exactly which microservice is talking to which other microservice uh, on which nodes these, these things are running? And uh, do you see some traffic uh, if some, let's say, a, an attacker was able to capture, uh, get into one part and goes rogue? Because if you do have a hacker inside of a container and he tries to use a network scanning, tries to access the, the Kubernetes API, I think you we should be, we are, we, are to, we are totally blind about that. And so you have a lot of these things. And uh, with Kubernetes and microservices, you have to automate, automate your, uh, your complete security solution. Because it's just too important to, to uh, keep the pace. OK, now a little bit back. Who knows, who he has heard about that Tesla hack last year? OK, quite a few. And we right now talked about all the really technical details, how we can secure Kubernetes API and all of this stuff. But uh, at Tesla, uh, it was a little bit different because here are some uh, details. One of the Tesla engineers uh, decided he would like to to use a Kubernetes dashboard just to control his cluster a little bit. And um, a hacker found out uh, there was a port open on the, on the Kubernetes cluster, and that was just the dashboard. Um, and the hard part was about uh, you could do a lot of things in your uh, security settings, but this was just a user failure. He deployed the dashboard without uh, username password interface and then decided hey I would like to access it from home from a uh, and so put it put it live on the internet and so the hacker was able come into uh, the cluster and uh, he just uses the cube uh, API uh, find out all the secrets because you can just say hey cube CDL get secrets you have a list of it then you can say, describe that secret, and then you decode it. It's just basic C4. So uh, it's just, it's literally clear text. And the next thing what this hacker does was just about uh, deploying his own pod on the cluster. And the pod was just a Bitcoin, mi a, a, a mining machine. And uh, he, he did a, a little bit more uh, just to hide himself uh, from the public and just sent everything out to an uh, IP address in China. And so uh, literally you, you can detect the IP address. But this guy just uses a, a CDN, uh, Cloudflare, 
So just hide his, his uh, IP address. Uh, so nobody was care, uh, was seen. Uh, you can't see that, that, that that's all the data delivered to China. And the next thing was a little bit of a trick inside of the pod. If he's, uh, the miner is running, uh, just uh, keep track that the CPU usage is between 15 and 25, 30% at all. So uh, it was ju uh, just okay. And these uh, servers, uh, there was a complete Kubernetes system on AWS, really big machines. Uh, that was the build form from Tesla, all Jenkins running, and nobody cared, uh, cares about that. That, uh, that hack was live for about nine months. So he, he was able to mine uh, money and roughly about six, six million US dollar. So, and that was just, hey, deploying a dashboard without any security tooling. And there was no verification process, no review at all, nothing. And nobody was uh, uh, seeing uh, all this bad behavior inside of a cluster over nine or 10 months. Here's another example, but it goes exactly the same way. Hey, just discovering a vulnerable uh, possibility to come into the cluster, uh, put some PHP files inside of it, uh, running a command and control server, so getting a resource shell or something, and then just using the complete cluster for a DDoS attack. So typically it's the same. How can we detect that thing? So typically that's almost the same. So someone gets access to your cluster. You see some signs. You see, for example, uh, additional, um, let's say, network connections, additional access to, this, to, to, to your pods. Uh, another thing could be uh, some processes, additional processes uh, which you, are not normal for your application. Um, then you see some, hey, these guys are downloading some software inside of your parts, accessing the Cube API, something like that, or uh, initiating a reverse shell, so another uh, network access to the outside world when it's not allowed, and so on, and so on. And when it comes to security, I heard, I, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of things, hey, we do a complete uh, scanning of our uh, container images. Uh, we do that in a, in a Docker registry scan. We do a digital signing so no one is able to, to uh, change our, our images from, from the CI uh, build pipeline to, uh, to production. The next thing is more about traditional security uh, when it comes to protecting our host systems. Um, protecting the user access, so all these classical things. But you can secure it even from a, from a different angle. If you're looking, let's say, only on the network, if you see uh, all these uh, suspicious network connections uh, which could happen, and that's exactly what we do at New Vector, we're analyzing the whole um, let's say traffic, network traffic inside of the cluster, everything. Every single packet which is entering your cluster, which is leaving your cluster, and these are typically, uh, let's say, all the network traffic that which you can, um, let's say, secure by a traditional firewall, web application firewall, but what's, uh, what's going on inside uh, in your cluster? If you, if you are able to see all the traffic flows between the pods, if you would, let's say, analyze the traffic on a, on a layer seven with deep package inspection, so you can exactly uh, lock down which protocol uh, is allowed between two services, that would, that would help a lot. And we, we did it a, a little bit uh, more in detail, so we define, go more into uh, a container security mesh and that's more about if you would like to secure your workload, you have to be exactly at your workload, not at the edge, not at the boundary of your cluster. You have to, to be, let's say, right at your pods, right at your container. That's one of the things. And uh, 
The second thing, it's more about uh, analyze the whole network traffic. Analyze, let's say, uh, what processes are running inside of a container, which files get accessed by these processes, and if you are able to lock down that behavior, uh, then you have a good chance exactly to, de to detect even, even such attacks like, like a Tesla. This guy was just installing additional pods. So if you have no, let's say, a security rule to run those pods on your, on your cluster, you were able just to, 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 to block that. Or if someone uh, breaks into a container, I do have a, 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 a small uh, a demo application with, with Apache struts where I can break into over application layer protocol, just over HTTP post request, and then can do some uh, bad things inside of a, of, of a container. And if you, if you are able to detect, hey, there's an additional network connection, there's an additional process running inside of my pod, which I don't know, and it's, it's not allowed to run there, then you, you, you will get an alert, and hopefully you are able to, to block that connection as well. Okay. Now a little bit uh, insight in, into a, a, a few product features, what we do. Uh, it's more reading and analyzing the complete network traffic, uh, giving you a complete visual visualization uh, what's going on in the cluster and that, that small uh, graphics, that's, that's just a screenshot of our, uh, of our uh, product. And all these things, if you, if, you, and if you are able just to read the traffic, learn automatically uh, which uh, part is talking to which other part, what about your, your network rules, uh, let's say automatically learn these uh, firewall rules, then you are in a, in a, in a good shape. Uh, detecting the application protocol, lock that thing down, uh, and even do all these other things, like vulnerability scanning on the fly during runtime. Okay, what about the time? And for the next few minutes, I just would like to showcase a few, uh, a, a, a little bit overview, because that's, that's more the theoretical part. But I would like to give you more an insight how, how it really looks like. And that's just, oops, doesn't work. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, looks better. Okay, so that's just a small cluster. Small cluster, uh, let's see. By the way, that's an Kubernetes cluster on, on IBM Cloud. Just three machines. We do have a few containers running, and that's exactly a little bit of a, a small, small demo application. A few pods or containers running. Yeah, let's see, let's see. And all these rectangles are pods. You see the live traffic between these pods, and if you click on the line, you can see, hey, here we do have, for example, just uh, detected on, 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 on layer seven, that's a, that's a, that's a Redis uh, database protocol spoken. And if you are just defining these networking rules, and the, uh, you can lock down the traffic so you can literally build, let's say, around each single pod, a complete firewall. You can allow this pod has only, can only reach the, uh, let's say, uh, the Redis database. And the Redis database is not able to talk to each, uh, to any other part. Not to the outside world, nothing. And that's exactly what you can, can uh, really lock down uh, pretty easily in, 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 in detail. Um, and normally, you just deploy it and you see the complete traffic. That's even just to get more insight what, uh, what is your application really doing under the hood. And typically, uh, we do have some, some, some great customers that say, hey, just install it, and within three, five minutes, you see all the details. And if we find there's something going wrong, like this connection, just sending out an alert using a syslog protocol, just pump all these messages out to a theme tool like Splunk, 
and you can have a complete, let's say, more uh, alerting uh, inside of your cluster, what's going wrong, and so on. Sorry, and so what do you mean by something went wrong? Like what, like too many, mm. too much traffic, slow? Typically, you say, in this example, you have a Redis database. So in the Redis database part, should only be contacted from a specific other port mm -hmm. and not from, from any port in the cluster. So that's, that's one rule. Mm -hmm. The second rule is more, uh, this Redis database should not be allowed to talk to the outside world, should not be uh, talk or connect to, to any other port in the cluster, nothing. And as soon as you see there is a, uh, a process inside of that pod who uh, would like to, let's say, reach out to the internet, that no. Alert, block that traffic. The next thing is about looking into, into this service and say, okay, there's only a single process who runs that Redis database. And as soon as you see there's a, 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 another process starting up in that pod, you say, that's a, that's a red flag. And that's exactly, and right now the, you, you don't have any control what's, what's really going on. We know it, we, we try to limit it with, with uh, network policies, um, with anything else. That's, that's a lot of work, but in this case you have to double check it. And not, maybe, maybe not, not only with a single security tool, it's better just to use a couple of them. I talked about vulnerabilities, can you can do that in, uh, in your CI CD pipeline? Uh, you should do it at least at runtime, just to get an idea because you're starting a part, you don't know how long it is running. If you do define and uh, create a really new application, you would say, okay, I would like to uh, uh, restart all my parts after an hour, that's better. But I have seen customers, they just taking their old application, put it in a container, run it for months. And then you, 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 you get more vulnerabilities, you can detect that, then you can attack these, these services. And all of these things, uh, typically if an attacker is able to enter one of your pods, uh, and that pod, let's say, has privileges, maybe uh, access to the Docker socket, then that you're, you're done. Because that's, that's literally root access in the cluster. <coughs> Okay, that was about. And here I do have some, some ad ad additional links. I have uh, run a, 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 a life hack, how to enter uh, apart from the outside, how to access the Docker socket, how to access the Cube API. Um, and there are some, 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 some additional tooling you can, you can look at our website. So, and at the end, maybe you have any questions. What about the timing? Yeah, three minutes. Three minutes? Yeah. To install the protection, do you use a daemon set or do you use a sidecar or something Okay, the question is about how, how do you deploy that, that, that thing? Do you use a sidecar or a daemon set? Uh, what we do, it's, it's just a daemon set. Uh, so, uh, runs as a, as a privileged part. Uh, to access um, on, on each and every uh, node in the cluster the complete uh, network stack, uh, the file system of the host and the containers, and even can read uh, the process lists. But we don't use any sidecar. Uh, we don't use any special uh, kernel module we bring with. So it's, 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 it's really a small, uh, really a, a, a few small containers. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. The file module or the, the tooling that logs the request, that's based on uh, network secrecy policies? Or is that... Okay, the question is if that uh, firewall is based on network policy, uh, security policies, uh, no. Uh, what we do is we are using a kernel interface uh, we read um, exactly, okay, give me a list of all the network devices on that particular host, and then we are able to hook in, into the traffic. It's, it's a Linux tab device, so we can read all the traffic. 
we get a complete copy. And uh, if we switch on the firewall in protection mode, we switch to an in, so-called so inline mode. And then we are getting the first packets. We analyze that with DPI. And as soon as we know uh, the source, the destination, and uh, what protocol is on the wire, we are able just to say, okay, allow the traffic because it's okay. Or we, can, we are able to, to alert and drop that packet. And that's, that, 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 that's a cool thing because we do everything on the network layer. So if an attacker comes over the network, we are able to block it before it hits your container. Yeah, next question. Um, the detection of the protocol that's being used, I imagine that relies on it not being encrypted? Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, he, the question was about uh, to detect the traffic, it should not be encrypted. And the next question would be typically uh, if we use, uh, let's say, a service mesh like Istio, LinkerD, what's going on there? And typically these things are deployed as a sidecar inside of your pod. And uh, if the original application container is not encrypted, uh, not using uh, encrypted traffic, we are able to, 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 to read that traffic inside of the pod because it's just a, it's just an, uh, it's a local loopback device. Uh, and so traffic between two containers, it's easy, easy to read. And if you have more questions, I'm staying here and you can even uh, look at our website. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Dieter.